It was a rainy day. Large drops of rain fell on the ground and on passers-by who were walking along the avenue at this evening hour. No one noticed the elderly woman who was walking slowly down the road. Droplets were falling on her wrinkled cheeks and worn clothes. The old coat had neatly sewn patches on it. Old-fashioned boots that would soon fall apart. On her head is a gray inconspicuous handkerchief. In her hands the old woman was clutching a piece of paper. She was constantly peering into it and looking around. This seems to be the place. That's it. The same house number. Finally, I made it. The older woman sighed in relief. She stopped in front of an upscale restaurant. Expensively dressed people drove up in expensive cars and entered with satisfied faces. You've got time to ask for money. One of the men said carelessly and walked past the old woman. But the elderly woman did not seem to notice the unpleasant phrase. She opened a large glass door. She stood for a while looking at the brightly decorated walls and exquisite furnishings, and then went to the receptionist's desk. A nice-looking girl, who a minute ago smiled amiably, squeaked squeamishly. She said grudgingly, You must have the wrong address. Please leave the restaurant immediately. Otherwise I'll call security. Girl, honey. I'm not leaving. I paid in advance for a seat, and I have the money. The woman just didn't understand why she couldn't go in. Are you kidding me? This is a decent society, not a place for people like you. Go away. The old woman froze in surprise. And why was I mistaken for homeless? Yes, my clothes are old, but they're always clean and don't smell anything. And my hair is clean. And I have never allowed myself to ask strangers for money. Even in the hardest of times, she thought. Her thoughts were interrupted by the girl's harsh voice. Jason, come here. Immediately a young man in uniform was near the receptionist. What's wrong, Amber? Is there a problem? Yeah, look at this. Says she needs to come here, and she's already paid for a table. Do something. The guard looked intently at the embarrassed old woman. What can be done here? Let's verify what she says. Show me your passport. The old woman pulled out a neatly wrapped handkerchief from an inside pocket of her coat and carefully began to unwrap it until a document appeared in her hands. Here, take it. The woman held out her passport to the guard. So, your name is Anna. Eighty years old. The man was surprised. Look, maybe you got something wrong. And it's not a restaurant, but a canteen? Better to let it stay outside. Amber defiantly objected. No, I need to go to this particular restaurant. Check it out, I made a reservation, the old lady asserted. The guard dialed the number, and the answer really surprised him. Yes, indeed there is a reservation and even paid for. But, excuse me, but this is an elite restaurant. It is visited exclusively by wealthy, respected people of the city. You don't belong here, the receptionist intervened again. The woman was very offended to hear that. Why are these people treating me like this? Because I haven't done anything wrong to them. There was never anything like that in my youth. We always supported each other, for better or for worse. And now what? Is it possible? Anna was perplexed. But she knew why she was here. And she wasn't going to back down. I didn't come here to eat. I need to see your director. To the principal? The administrator and the security guard were perplexed. The receptionist was furious when she saw the old lady silently take her passport and start walking up the long stairs. Don't you realize what's going to happen when that homeless woman comes near the guests? She became angry at the guard. What will I do? replied Jason. Don't worry. The principal will kick her out in a jiffy. And us too. You don't know how hard I work to get a job here and I don't want to lose my job to some old lady. I'll call the director and let him know. Shit, no answer. What kind of day is it today? Continued Amber's indignation. I wonder why she came here. Jason asked. Anna struggled to get upstairs. Such exertion made her legs ache. Finally, this endless staircase is over, she sighed. 
The woman opened the heavy door and found herself in a large crowded hall. The many bright spots in the form of colored lights hung everywhere, made Anna close her eyes. Decorated tables overflowed with all kinds of food. Waiters with gilded trays walked past them. And on the chairs sat men in expensive suits and women in evening gowns. Anna became uncomfortable, but not a minute later she caught the scornful look of one man, whose index finger was pointed directly at her. What is this? This isn't a homeless shelter. Get her out of here right now. It's disgusting to look at. Hey, waiter, can't you hear me? Yeah, sure, I'll tell the supervisor. We'll fix it. Don't worry, the waiter fussed. That's right. These homeless people have got nerve. Now they're coming into the restaurant. No peace. Why aren't the guards watching it? Said the lady in the shiny dress. Anna closed her eyes in horror. She had never experienced such humiliation. She wanted to hide. Another girl joined in the abuse of the old woman. Under the influence of alcohol, she did not hold back her emotions at all. Isn't it a little late for grandma to be going to the restaurant? At that age, you're already thinking about eternal rest. Would you like to come to the table with us? Just please without me. I'm allergic to that kind of smell. The loud laughter of the narcissistic lady echoed throughout the restaurant. The elderly woman tried not to cry from such injustice. What's wrong with me? Yes, I'm old. But that's no reason to mock and shame me in public. They themselves will be old and infirm. How can they not understand that? When I was young, there was no such thing. We have always respected our elders, no matter how much money they have in their purse. Anna asked herself. But I couldn't say anything out loud. It was as if her tongue was numb. She would endure and still get what she came for. But alas, the mockery of the old woman continued. Cries were heard from all sides. I didn't pay that kind of money to see a homeless person. Why should we put up with such squalor? What's the director looking at? I'm going to close this restaurant. The waiters hid in corners and whispered among themselves. Many felt sorry for the old woman but no one dared object to the drunken crowd. These people like to come here to have fun. And most importantly, to show everyone their status. And of course, the restaurant thrived. It was prestigious to work in such a place. The owner was not stingy and paid surprisingly generously. Nobody wanted to lose such a prestigious place. Only one girl, a waitress, was very upset. She hated to see a woman insulted just because she was old and not wearing expensive clothes. These are not human beings. How can you make fun of an elderly person like that? I'll go to the director of the restaurant right now and tell him what's going on here, she said firmly. Daisy, you won't get anywhere with that. The director will support the guests anyway, because the gentlemen, though insolent, bring profit to the restaurant. And the woman will be chased away. No one wants her here. You haven't even worked here a week yet. Maybe you shouldn't take that risk. The entire waiter team urged her. You know, there are more expensive things in life than money, but you don't seem to know them. The girl ran out of the hall with these words. The situation became completely unbearable. Some man staggered over to Anna, grinned and said, I like it. It's pretty good. Well, why don't you sing or dance for us, if you're here? Oh, and the music is appropriate. Come on, come on. And the man clapped his hands loudly. His silly idea was supported by the others. The audience laughed out loud. Anna couldn't stand the humiliation any longer. Her heart ate. Tears rolled down her cheeks. Her legs began to shake, and she walked to the exit. Before I had even taken a few steps, the door to the hall opened, and a tall man appeared on the threshold. He looked questioningly at those seated at the tables, and shouted loudly, Gentlemen, what's going on? Is everything all right? Anna could not take her eyes off the man who had entered, as if she were paralyzed. Paul, Paul, my darling, Happy has grown up, matured, and looks so much like his father. The same nose, eyes, chin. Anna thought. Tears welled up again from the old woman's eyes, 
but now with sudden joy. It was so great that for a moment, Anna even forgot the hurt and humiliation she had suffered. But the man passed her by. He was more interested in the mood of his guests, the regular visitors. Paul, everything is fine as usual. Except that she? One of the men pointed a finger at Anna. Well, why is she here? You have to admit, she doesn't belong here. Yeah, get her out of here. Don't embarrass yourself and ruin our evening. The rest of the audience supported him. Of course, it's just a misunderstanding, and we'll straighten it out now. As compensation, dessert is on the house tonight. No one else will disturb your rest, gentlemen. And you, come with me, he turned to Anna. He didn't recognize me. Paul was just a boy then. So many years have passed, a lifetime, he could have forgotten, thought the old woman, and silently wiped away a tear. Can you hear me? Asked Paul again, thinking about how to handle the conflict correctly. Yes, yes. The woman fidgeted, waking up from her memories, barely closing the door of the hall. The man said, Hello, my name is Paul, and I am the director of this restaurant. It has come to my attention that the guests have behaved inappropriately with you. Forgive them, they just weren't expecting your presence at all. I will compensate you. I know you paid for the table, you will get double the amount. Not only will you be able to eat, but you'll be able to buy yourself something. Paul, of course, noticed the old woman's worn out clothes. It was not for nothing that she was mistaken for a homeless beggar. And what do people like that want? Money. The more the better. Except where did she get the money to order the table? It's expensive. Even for a working person. And the main thing is why. Anyway, it doesn't matter, Paul decided. He has no intention of bothering with this strange old woman anymore. Let me show you out. Come down, Paul said, pointing to the stairs. Anna could not believe her ears. It was her Paul. Yes now, a grown-up solid man. But to her he is still a child. And also chases her away. What a shame. The insults and humiliations of the restaurant guests were nothing compared to what Paul had said. No, I'm not leaving until I talk to him. He must know the truth. In her musings, she did not notice how she came down the stairs. Paul had already pulled out his wallet and was counting the money. Here, take it. It's all I can do for you. At that moment it seemed as if the woman's heart would burst into pieces. But she found the strength to say Paul. I won't take the money. Please let me stay and talk to you. Paul felt he was losing the rest of his patience. I've got this homeless girl on my head. I don't know how to get rid of her. He felt himself getting nervous. It was not in Paul's character to waste time in idle conversation with complete strangers. I'm sorry, I'm a very busy man. I don't have the opportunity to talk to outsiders. Don't misunderstand me. And I'm not an outsider. I'm your mother. The old woman could barely contain herself from crying again. The administrator, Amber, and the security guard, Jason, looked at each other. I told you she was inadequate. You shouldn't have let her in. Paul did not believe the woman's words. Look, this is too much. What do you allow yourself? What you say is a lie. My mother died years ago. About the money, that's your right. Take it or leave it. But I'm going to have to ask you to leave the premises. Jason, deal with her. After a few moments Paul disappeared from view. Well, what are you standing around for? Come on, let's go, Jason commanded. The elderly woman could hardly stand, she was shocked by Paul's words. The guard closed the door behind her. The exhausted old woman sank down on a nearby bench and cried. It was dark outside. Everything was ruined and she had been saving for so long from her small pension to pay for a place in the restaurant where her son worked. Finally, the long-awaited day arrived. In the morning, Anna imagined the moment when she would see her son, tell him everything, and be able at least occasionally to see her son while she was still alive. In her excitement, the woman did not even notice the unpleasant wind that had risen towards evening. Her hands were frozen, and her old mittens were gone. Maybe she lost it? 
What does it matter now, though? She thought. The old woman hid her hands in her coat pockets. Suddenly in one of them she came across an envelope. Well, how could I forget? There's a baby picture of Paul in this envelope. He's six years old here. He must remember himself. And then he will listen to me, exclaimed the poor woman. From the humiliation and insults she had suffered, she did not tell her son the most important thing. Anna decided to wait until her son got off work, and then she would finally talk to him. How long the time dragged on. It seemed like an eternity had passed. At last the door opened, and Paul and some other people came out of the restaurant. He had already opened the car door, carelessly saying to the driver, Home. Wait, honey. The old woman shouted from the last of her strength. You again. Listen, go away nicely. Otherwise I'll have to take extreme measures. I'll have to call the police. Paul answered grudgingly and got into the car. Let's go. No, wait. Paul ordered the driver when he saw the picture in the woman's hands. The man got out of the car and asked in complete bewilderment, Where did you get this picture? When you turned six years old, a photographer came to see us. So we took a photo as a memento. Don't you remember that at all? I had two pictures, but the second one got lost. Fortunately, not lost. Paul certainly knows that. This photo was with him in an orphanage, then with the family that took him in, and now it lies in an old photo album. But how come? I was told my mother died of a heart attack, Paul asked himself, but found no answer. Anna is completely frozen. Come on, I'll buy you some tea, and we'll talk, Paul suggested, and the woman happily agreed. Anna was happy that she was finally talking to her son. But if the woman's heart was calm, something strange was going on in Paul's soul. Emotions overwhelmed him, mixed feelings of hate and joy, joy that he had found his mother, and hatred that his mother had abandoned him. Paul was lucky to have a foster family. His foster parents gave him everything, a home of his own, a good upbringing, an education. But they were too strict and demanding, and Paul felt deprived of parental love. Things could have been different with his real mother. It could have been, but it wasn't. Why did you leave me, and now all of a sudden you're trying to get me back? It's too late to change anything. Son, listen to me. I'll tell you everything. Just please don't interrupt, Anna asked. I was born into a big family. My mother had seven of us. I was the eldest. The father died. The younger children grew up, created their own families, and moved away. And I stayed in my parents' house. No husband, no child, no stable family. That suited my mother just fine. And I agonized over living my life for nothing. But one day, everything changed. Danny came to town and I immediately fell in love with him. Mom reluctantly accepted him. She had nowhere else to go. But my joy was short-lived. Danny drowned. It was very painful for me. I was dying of grief. But the troubles didn't end there. Soon my mother died of a heart attack. I was left all alone. It seemed to me that life no longer had any meaning. But I got some good news from you, my son. I found out I was pregnant. You were the best thing that ever happened to me. I cared for you. I loved you. I wanted to be the best mother for you. Caring, loving a gift of fate. What are you saying? Why did you betray me by putting me in an orphanage? You know, I don't remember your care. But I remember the terrible years I spent in an orphanage very well. If you have come to ask forgiveness for that, don't hope you will get it. Even your advanced age won't help, Paul said with resentment in his voice. The idyll in Anna's soul did not last long. She so hoped that the picture she brought would help her to improve her relationship with her son. But alas, no. Wait, son. I'll explain everything, the woman began, but Paul interrupted her abruptly. I don't need your explanations. I don't believe you anyway, the man said. So many years have passed since then, and he himself will soon be 60 years old. But the memory of his childhood never faded. 
He remembered how every Sunday at the orphanage, he waited for his mother to come and take him home. But that didn't happen. Instead of his mother, a foster family took him in. Anna did not know how to apologize to her son for this. She always remembered the day she brought little Paul to the orphanage. Javi looked at her with eyes full of tears and asked her not to leave him in someone else's home. But the woman couldn't do otherwise. She herself was going into a strange house called the hospital, and possibly forever. Son, believe me, I had no other choice. My heart problem started a long time ago. At first I had discomfort, and then severe pains and attacks. If you knew how much I scolded myself for not going to the doctors in time. And when I did, it was already too late. The doctor said that only an operation could save me, and that the chances of survival were slim. And even if I did survive, I would have to spend a long time in the hospital. Son, I'm sorry, I was scared. I had no one to leave you with. Anna begged her siblings to take Paul in while she was in the hospital. Anna, we take it, but you have to understand that we have children of our own who need to be fed and fed and clothed. And that takes money, a lot of money. And then there's your son. No, we can't take him, the relatives answered. I thought I was only giving you away for the time I would spend in the hospital. It turned out to be forever. Suddenly a miracle happened. The surgery was a success, and I left the hospital in a month and a half. Sonny, I went straight to the orphanage to pick you up. But the thing I was most afraid of happened. You had already been given to foster parents. I begged in terror for the address of that family. But the director of the orphanage refused me. From that moment on life lost its meaning for me. I kept dreaming that one day I would see you. No matter what, today was the best day ever. My dream came true. I saw you. Paul stared at the woman's wrinkled face for a long time, trying to remember his mother's features, but he could not. He had no pictures of his mother, and time had erased her face from his memory. The woman spoke so sincerely about her life that the man caught himself thinking that her words didn't seem false to him. It may have been a fairy tale, but he believed it. And how did you find me after all these years? Asked Paul. I'll tell you, son. About a year ago in the park, I met a woman with whom I had worked together long ago. Her daughter is the founder of a charity that helps put children in foster homes. That's probably not the right thing to do. But she did some research on the family you were raised with. And then she helped me find you, son, how successful and smart you are. I'm going to be proud of you. Anna, of course, understood that her son would not be able to forgive her, would not call her mother. Betrayal doesn't go away, but maybe someday he would be able to understand and forgive her. And that forgiveness would be the best reward she could get. The lingering pause was interrupted by Paul. How are you living now? How's your health? It's just that you look. Paul was confused, not knowing how to say it. Just looking homeless? A lot of people have already told me that today. I lost my parents' home. My sister's children, my nephews, cheated me out of my place. But I have a place to live, I rent a small room. Don't worry about me, son. The main thing is that you are doing well. They didn't notice how much time passed while they were talking. It was getting dark outside, and it was still raining. Can I take you home? Paul suddenly asked. Yes, of course, son. The woman agreed. Stop right here, I'm close to here, just a few minutes, Anna hurriedly said. Are you sure? Maybe I should walk you out, the man suggested. No, don't bother. Thank you for listening. I will pray for you for the rest of my life. Anna told the whole truth to Paul. Only one thing she kept from him, something she was ashamed to talk about. She did live on the street for a long time. And then a man in the yard of the house where she liked to sit on the bench took pity on her. He turned out to be a janitor. He had a small room in the street where, apart from cleaning tools, a small sofa and a chair could fit. This was where Anna now lived. She sank down on the couch. Her legs and head were very sore. But she was happy for the first time in years. That night she had the best dream of her life. 
a dream in which she was with her son. A few days later, Paul showed up on her doorstep. How did you find me, son? The surprised woman asked. You found me, now it's my turn, Paul replied smiling. Come with me, the man suggested. Paul, where to? Wondered Anna even more. To our place. I'll introduce you to my wife and my grandchildren. You have three of them. Anna was very happy. Then Paul handed her the key. I have a small apartment. No one has lived in it for a long time. And now you will live there. That's how it is. Anna almost lost hope, but happiness found her anyway. It found her and warmed her like the warm summer sun. This happiness was given by her son, who was able to understand and forgive.